Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the IDBI Bank Q3 FY22 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your dust on phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Renish from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, uh, thank you, Oman. Uh, hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the RDBI Bank q 3 f 22 on the conference call. From the management team, we have with us today Mr. Rakesh Sharma, MD and CEO, Mr. Samuel Joseph, Deputy Managing Director, Mr. Suresh Katanar, Deputy Managing Director, and Mr. P. Sitaram, AD and CEO. We'll start with the opening remarks and then we'll open the floor for Q&A. I would like to thank the management team for giving us the opportunity to host the uh, Q3F22 on this call. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Rakesh Sharma for the opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And hearty welcome to the, uh, this analyst meet for the Q3 results. Yet one more quarter when we are having virtual meeting. It's my pleasure to present to you the numbers for Q3. The bank has shown consistency in growth and improvement in the financial despite challenging position created by COVID-19. The, you know, the <coughs> performance has been better than the guidance given at the beginning of the year. And we are quite confident of improving the performance further. So just a few highlights I will mention to you. And then after that, I will hand it, uh, hand the, it over to Mr. Sitaram, our CFO, for making the presentation. The bank had earned a uh, profit of 578 crore, which shows 53% increase YOY. And there has been 31% increase in net interest income. Of course, you know, there has been some uh, extraordinary 353 crore of income by way of income tax refund. Even if we exclude that, there has been 11.6% uh, yeah, YOY growth in income and uh, the net interest margin also has increased to 3.88% and after excluding that income tax refund it will be 3.31% CASA is 54.71% and CASA growth has been 11% the NPS the, the assets are quite stable net NPA uh, was 1.70% marginally lower than the previous quarter which was then when it was 1.71 the capital adequacy has been quite robust and the collection efficiency has been 96 percent despite this covid situation we have been able to um, uh, affect uh, reasonably good recovery of 900 crores and um, also we have been able to maintain our collection efficiency at the 96 percent in fact there is improvement and the SMA numbers have declined as compared to September quarter. Now the area which, you know, little bit remains is the growth part. Of course, there has been growth in, uh, you know, our structured retail asset by 4% YOY 4 and retail portfolio when we include retail, agriculture and uh, MSME, there has been 5% growth. And um, uh, of course, we are targeting uh, 8 to 10 percent growth. Let us hope because uh, this COVID has slightly affected the growth part. And secondly, like you know, the whatever the some partly the growth has gone towards the NCDs because some of our good clients they are you know availing the facilities of NCDs, so which is parked in uh, Treasury. And so that's why this uh, growth appears to be muted here. After four years of our um, uh, that PCA period, and now after one year of that, first time we have shown 12% growth in our mid-corporate advances, and this mid-corporate advances was our focus area also. Now you know the uh, way we have strengthened our uh, this uh, sanctioning teams. We are quite confident that going forwards we will be able to show uh, reasonably good very uh, calibrated uh, growth in advances which will ensure the good quality assets 
just uh, to mention two three things about the guide uh, lines which we had given so i had indicated that our uh, sleepage ratio will be less than 3% i can mention that you know at the end of the 9 months it is 2.80% similarly credit cost which we had promised up to 1.75 it is analyzed this it is 1.60 and cost to income ratio for the 9 month period is 43.59% so that way you know whatever we had promised at the beginning of the year including roe and roa we have been able to surpass the numbers and show better improvement so that's why um, going forward I am, I am quite confident that uh, next year also uh, we will be able to show the better improvement of course the guidance for next year will be given to you at the uh, uh, presentation of q4 results now with that i will request uh, mr sitaram cfo to make a presentation and after that we can take question answers thank you very much thanks for being present here yeah mr sitaram over to sitaram over to you uh, good afternoon to all of you now the mds covered most of the high spots so i'll not spend too much time on this if we go to the presentation slide uh, to, uh, to 5 page 5 as uh, out of the operating highlights most of it has already been uh, covered by the md you want to say to two more things that uh, casa ratio has maintained slightly improved to 54.69 cost to income for the 9 months is 43.59 that uh, and the overall the retail corporate ratio is at 6337 which is also almost the same as in the uh, from september so we have been able to maintain all this and including a pcr of uh, 97% including technical layers rate not case that uh, if we go to the next slide this is what uh, the, just uh, briefly the pat has grown 53% year on year and 2% quarter on quarter uh, overall operating profit has also gone up by 31% quarter on quarter and uh, nii has grown by almost 30% whether on quarter or quarter or year on year as uh, overall the nim therefore has improved as md mentioned even if we take out that uh, interest on uh, refund of income tax still we are well above 3% as far as uh, nim is concerned uh, the cost income ratio is set below 45 43.59 I'll quickly go to the next slide. Here we are saying that the net NPA, as I mean, despite uh, uh, this quarter we had the slippages. One is from the divergence, which we disclosed in uh, the, the, the as part of the stock exchange disclosure after receiving the report. Plus we had one uh, bigger uh, the corporate case and some retail cases. Despite these slippages, we have maintained the net NPA at 1.7%. as compared to the same ratio which was there in september and uh, gnp has also slightly come down on the back of uh, the technical rate write off that we have done of about 1150 crores the the capital is of course uh, quite comfortable i will now go to slide 9 uh, 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 this is the break up of the pl as you can see uh, the first feature is of course what is uh, the, the declining market rate both the interest income as well as the interest cost both are trended down but we have been able to maintain an improvement in the nii in this improvement in nii again we repeat that though there is this uh, the 353 crores of uh, interest on refund of income tax even if we exclude that uh, we are still uh, the, at a good improvement over the corresponding period so i can give you the figures as we later uh, go on now the other income Uh, that now uh, at the last uh, uh, quarter meeting i had said that it uh, the recovery from right of cases is now to be classified under provisions and contingencies and we had presented like that but after that uh, rbi has again amended its math circular so now that uh, line item has come back to other income we have regrouped even the previous year figure also in that so overall the other income has shown an improvement one feature was that in the Q3 of last year, we had a sale from uh, the gain from sale of strategic investment. That of course there is no repeat here, but we have certain amount of recovery from return of cases. But uh, the, if we the, exclude this uh, one off also, there is an improvement in the other income overall. Uh, the, then coming to the opex, we have seen some amount of uptick in the opex, 
broadly under the employee cost the increase is because uh, the, we have uh, enhanced the family pension rate in line with the industry what other banks have already done then uh, this also the subscription to nps has been enhanced so we have taken a, 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 a not only the period cost also the from the effective date to now the accumulated cost also therefore there is a limit, amount of one of that and uh, the, the, in the other uh, the, uh, in the employee cost the valuation of the retirement benefit some amount of provision has come for that plus in the other operating cost there is a small increase mainly because of uh, the increasing level of operations as we come out of pca and uh, certain other uh, marginal items there is no major cost for this increase in other operating cost then coming to the operating profit there is an increase of about 42 percent as uh, uh, that is year on year and uh, uh, operating profit if you remove that strategic gain side then we have shown an improvement of about 58 percent provisions and contingencies will come to it in a little more detail later overall the profit uh, pvt as uh, we already discussed there is an improvement of 42 percent and pat has improved by almost 100 percent uh, interest income increases, as I mentioned, this is the breakup. Advances in, uh, uh, income has uh, gone up. We also have uh, improvement in other in interest income. That's where the interest on refund of income tax is included. And uh, other, uh, the, the, all the income trends are uh, uh, in the, uh, the same way that they have been trending in the previous part of the year. NIM has improved now to uh, the uh, uh, 3.65%. Now, we, uh, of course, this next slide, page 11, it shows the buildup of how this percentage improvements have been contributed from various segments. It is quite self evident here. So, I will move on to the next uh, slide. This is the provisions and contingencies and spend a couple of minutes on this. First is on the depreciation of investment. Again, there is nothing unusual or big here. These are all normal uh, moment in provision. The provision for NPAs we have provided for uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the calendar provision. And uh, the, also we have provided for the divergence that has been identified in the uh, report, plus that uh, the slippages, of course, during, for, uh, during the quarter. The provision for standard assets, Again, uh, there is a negative here. The negative is because uh, the one case that uh, we have uh, 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 provided earlier that has moved to NPA, now as part of diversion. Therefore, that has, uh, in the provision for uh, restructured assets, we have uh, made all the provisions as far as the COVID restructuring is concerned, and that is reflected in the uh, quarter as well as the nine months. Overall, Therefore, the income tax, of course, there is no current tax. It's all the different tax as we uh, the, the used uh, carry forward losses for uh, setting off the current year profit. We have done a technical write-off of about 1150 crores. That's part of that bad debt written off. Besides the normal settlement and OTS that we do, uh, that is about 230 crores, which is there. So this is the, the, uh, the breakup of the provisions for the year. If we come to the next slide, these are the yield ratio. Overall, the yield on advances. Uh, the, in line with the market, of course, we are uh, the, uh, this is daily average. But uh, in line with the movement in interest rate, overall, the yield on advances has uh, come down. But we have, we have been able to maintain the, uh, the similar control on the cost of deposit. So overall, the NIM has improved to 3.65. And the cost of income has been, now remained steady at about. 43%. So this is the next slide shows the cost of deposit, which I just now mentioned, that along with the movement in the yield on uh, advances, we all, uh, the cost of deposits and the cost of funds are also tended down. Yeah. If we come to slide uh, number 16, this is the, the balance sheet uh, position. Nothing special to mention here. So we will go on to the next slide. This is the slide 17. The overall deposit uh, the position has come down, but this deposit has come down mainly because we have dropped the bulk deposit. We have increased the CASA both in numeric terms as well as in terms of percentage. And within CASA also, the share of savings has increased. 
So the deposit mix has moved to a more favorable composition uh, over the quarter and as well as compared to the December of last year. And this is also one of the factors why the NIM has improved and uh, the cost of deposits and the cost of funds have come down. The next uh, the, the slide, it just shows the movement in the individual components of the deposit. I have already mentioned this in the highlight. I will not repeat that. Coming to the advances part, on the composition of advances, there is a growth, um, the, the, albeit in the, the single digit, both in the retail as well as in corporate. Overall, uh, the, uh, the, the composition of the advances and the structure of the advances book has more or less remained stable as compared to September. Now, coming to the next slide, this is the PSL. PSL, we are, uh, the compatible, we achieved all the criticism. Now, moving on to the, the investments, which is in slide 22. Again, there is nothing much to mention here. The movement in the SLR as compared to the December of last year as well as September is mainly because that uh, in Q1 and Q2, we have directed some amount of the SLR. The non-SLR, there is a slight increase because we have been lending to corporate now uh, the, also through the NCD route. And that uh, corporate NCD book is reflecting in some increase in the non-SLR. Uh, then uh, we come to the, the slide on the COVID provisioning. This is the provisioning which we have been uh, alerting to you every time. So we have fully provided for the, all the restructuring done up to December. Plus we also have those additional provisions made which we are not yet uh, taken action. We'll take a call at the end of the year. On the next slide, we are given the uh, how the gross NPAs on the next NPA stand. Uh, we already mentioned and talked about the ratio. Uh, just want to highlight that in uh, DA1 category, we are uh, provided fully provided for all, more than 50% of the uh, DA1 uh, uh, loans. And as far as DA2 is concerned, we are more than 80% fully provided. Next one is on the movement. As, we, as I said, the first time NPA. For the quarter, is a, uh, the aggregate is about 1,600 crores. Out of which, there is one uh, corporate case, and then the remaining are mostly the retail. No, there are two corporate cases, sorry. One has been identified through the RBI divergence report, and another slipped in this quarter. Both of which, we are fairly confident that we'll be able to upgrade in the next uh, couple of quarters. Settlements and upgrades are about 520 crores, and uh, the, that write-off includes the technical write-off that I mentioned of about 1150 crores. Slippage ratio, MD had already mentioned that it is below 3%, and it would have been even less than that, but for that uh, two cases, which we are fairly confident that they, will, they are doing well now also, but we had to make them NPA, then uh, we are expecting them to upgrade uh, in the near future. The position of summary of NCLT has been given here. There's not much change in the position as compared to September. Sadly, we are at the uh, same position. Coming to slide 22, that is the SM, sorry, 28, the SMA position. Again, there is a, as a, this has been discussed by MD. That is the significant improvement in the SMA position, both in the corporate as well as in retail, as a combination of the measures taken under the government guidelines as well as the RBI guidelines. Plus, overall, there is an improvement in the, uh, the position of the borrowers. Uh, so, even though we have seen the second wave and the third, but I think successively, the, uh, the, with the experience gained and with the intensity of the uh, COVID uh, not being as much as it was in the first uh, wave and the uncertainty having been handled uh, quite well over a period of time, we are seeing a reduction in the stress and uh, the improvement in the outlook. Capital adequacy, which we are given in the, the, the slide 30, we are comfortable, I already mentioned. This, of course, doesn't include the nine months uh, profit. In the next slide, shareholding pattern, there is not much change. It is the same. The book value is 30 rupees, but uh, if we deduct the revaluation reserve, intangible and the DTA, the book value would be in the range of 17 and a half. 
and the uh, digital footprint it is uh, continuing to be uh, is quite healthy as part of the customer induced transaction with almost uh, 96% are uh, the digital out of which the share of uh, this one the, the UPI yeah. has gone up this is also uh, a trend that is showing that the small volume uh, the transaction the usage of UPI has jumped uh, this is you can say one of the side effects of covid over the Now, I will not uh, discuss too much about the financial inclusion part. This is the more or less, these are the, what I, uh, the uh, status quo as of September. There is uh, improvements in all this uh, from September to December, but uh, yes. Now, coming to subsidies again, there is nothing much to tell. All are profit making. They have shown improvement, some uh, little, some more, but all have shown improvement in their performance this quarter. On the guidance, I think MD has already discussed. I will not repeat that, uh, that guidance. It is given here. So I think without my further ado, I will leave the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is ready. Anyone who wish to ask a question may please press star and one. First question is from the line of Panti Chala from IDPI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. A uh, few questions from my side. Firstly, on the margin per se, as you rightly said, if we adjust with the one off income tax refund, the net interest margin comes to around 3.3% for the quarter. Yes. So if we, try, if we try to compare with June against September, there is a decline in the net interest margin on a sequential basis, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Also, if we compare with the last year FI21, which is 3.4%, there is still a decline. So what could be the margin expectation going forward as what we are seeing now, cost of funds has completely declined and it's almost near to bottom out because the GSEC yield is showing up move. Few banks have shown that increase in the deposit rates. So it seems to be cost of funds are bottoming out. So how should we consider cost, uh, net interest margin for during next quarter as well as FI23? Yeah, if we compare with the previous quarter, September 21 without this uh, interest on income tax, it was 3.02. So that has improved by about 29 basis points. In the, okay. uh, the third quarter of last year, the comparable figure was 2.8. So that improvement is about as uh, the 53 basis point. Okay. Okay. So the, if you compare the nine months figure, again, without this uh, interest on income tax, nine months ended December, the figure was 2.8, and now it is 3.46. So the improvement is 66 basis point. Okay. So, so the, any way you look at it, there has been an improvement in the mix. Now, coming to the second part of the question, that uh, the what uh, the what will happen when the uh, interest rate cycle starts reversing. So if you look at our uh, advances right now, uh, the, as I mentioned, uh, the new advances that we are given, uh, the, some of them are through the for the corporate through the NCD route, which is uh, not long term. It is the more of a the medium or a short term, and. Uh, also, on the, the, this one, the, uh, the, uh, the retail side, uh, we are well placed to pass on this uh, uh, the interest rate cycle as it reverses on to the advances side as and when, because most of the, the advances are linked to our uh, RLLR so the, or uh, other floating rates. So the, we do not apprehend that uh, the catch-up will be so uh, delayed that uh, it will impact uh, uh, the NIP. Yes, but uh, there will be a factor that as we grow, the, the rate of growth is the question. 
we have been focusing on quality of growth rather than the volume of growth so therefore it will continue to be moderate so the uh, we will not be under a compulsion to the high cost deposits uh, at a fast pace so we will be able to keep a focus on the, the cost of funds as we have been doing now it uh, without doubt the composition will again change we will take uh, some resort to say bulk deposits or other as we need funds when we go forward but that's still quite uh, some time away liquidity is very comfortable and it is sufficient to uh, fund our uh, the growth story for at least the next few quarters so the we really do not uh, the envisage a situation where we will be facing a increasing uh, trend in the cost of uh, deposit but we are unable to pass it on to the uh, the loan side what we are much much more uh, focused on is uh, uh, that we want growth which is a qualitative nature and that is where we will be focusing our energy on so so in that case uh, what one should consider a net interest margin for uh, next year as such so in fact net interest margin as the last time at the beginning of the year i had indicated that it will be more than 3% and consistently i think we have been able to maintain so next year look keeping in view although there is like you know scenarios uh, the rising interest rate scenario will be there but as mr sitaram has explained we will be able to pass it on so i we are quite confident that we will be able to maintain nim of 3.25 and more during the next year and accordingly next year you know at the time of declaration of our q4 results we will indicate the exact number okay okay so secondly uh, that was very helpful sir thank you uh, uh, secondly on the uh, asset quality front what we were observing uh, as major impact of covid 2 for the industry as such was visible in q1 fi 22 so after that q2 fi 22 there was a decline or improvement in the uh, gross npa or decline in the slippages but in our case what we are observing first time npa or fresh slippages are consistently q1 to q2 q2 to q3 there is a increase and in fact in q3 if you observe the settled plus upgradation kind of a recovery part which we see is quite low as compared to uh, first two quarters so any specific reason if you can share also uh, in this you have shared that two corporate accounts are there so can you bifurcate the first time npa how, what was the corporate amount what was the retail and what was the other msme or such like that actually you are right this uh, you know this uh, we had indicated that our slippage ratio will be less than 3% and we have been able to maintain it below 2.80 now coming to your uh, question specifically now that 1639 the break up is 1066 is corporate and 573 is retail so retail is um, uh, more or less in fact um, it is better than the uh, estimates and uh, we have been able to control them that uh, you will see from the slides on uh, sms that our sms have come down and uh, the stress has come down the collection efficiency as i had indicated earlier also it is 96 percent my uh, uh, total sma when i am saying total sma means including everything not uh, only for more than 5 crores everything it was 3.86 percent as on 30th september which has come down to 3.53 as on 31st december now this out of 1066 of corporate 900 crore is uh, are two accounts which are one is of course as we had indicated one was because of divergence and the other one uh, uh, due to some commercial uh, commencement of commercial pro, uh, production both the accounts are that which are regular as far as repayment uh, record is concerned but on technical grounds we have been classified as np and we are quite hopeful that these two accounts will be upgraded either in this quarter or uh, or the next quarter so uh, but for this i think uh, our uh, the slippage ratio would have been less than 2% in fact it would have been 900 crore if we exclude the corporate slippage is are only 166 crore so um, it's a one off situation and we are not uh, much strained about that because we know that these two accounts will be upgraded either during this quarter or next quarter and these are only due to technical reasons so uh, but i can assure you the the slippage is and the the slippages are under control and our recovery uh, you know position and the 
systems which we have established are quite robust now and we do not expect much slippages in the near future thank you thank you thank you very much sir for that so lastly from my side uh, if you can share the one single data point outstanding uh, restructured standard advances as of december 31 beat 1 2 all inclusive but uh, as of uh, december what will be that number and against that how what will be the provisioning we have yeah just one second we'll be clear we'll give that figure Restructure book is there, no? Yes. Two is there. Four eighty. All together. It is in the forty lakh forty seventy. Yeah, actually, this uh, I have this number immediately available. Sitaram will find out in the meantime that uh, this uh, COVID, which we have restructured, uh, this other than COVID, uh, he will give you a number. Uh, it, during COVID season, as per RBI instructions, we have uh, restructured the advances. Are uh, the, that amount is around four thousand four hundred thirty-six crore, which is three point five percent of our total standard advances. so it is like you know it is again as per uh, you know which was our estimate that it will be in the range of 3 to 4% so that there is uh, and these accounts are uh, regular uh, as such there is no problem other than this covid sitaram uh, any other numbers are there with you yeah in fact uh, the s4 a yeah that s4 a and fiber 25 aggregates to 3495 crore So, uh, so four four three six plus three four nine five. Can we say like that? Yeah. Yeah, that was very helpful, sir. Lastly, sir, uh, uh, ECL GS scheme. Uh, what is the outstanding amount? Uh, the ECL GS disbursement. What we have done. The loan amount total towards ECL GS. About two thousand. About two thousand crore. Okay. Okay. And how the collection efficiency in this is happening in ECL GS uh, loan amount loan book? About If you can share. Uh, 96%. Okay, similar uh, of, on a overall basis kind of thing. That was very helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Anyone who wish to ask a question at this time, they may please press star and one. Next question is from the line of Pranav Tendulkar from Dell Enterprises. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks a lot for the opportunity. So, uh, the two corporate accounts that you mentioned, they totally constitute for the total 1066 uh, crore of corporate slippages that you mentioned, or is there anything else? So, this yeah, out of the total corporate slippage, that two accounts are about 970 crore. Then 970. there are another uh, three accounts which are in aggregate less than about 100 crore. Okay, so this 97, 970 crore will be you are saying that upgraded in the next quarter. No, the next quarter or the quarter there after. Okay, uh, okay, two two they quarters. They are from footing. They are quite, uh, they are doing quite well, and uh, overall they are regular. There is. Correct. Correct. Sir, recovery and upgrades for the next quarter or for the year uh, could be how much? For the next quarter. Next quarter or the or next six months or any anything that you can actually uh, to be very frank uh, this we had fixed up a target of four thousand crore recovery uh, and upgrade uh, recovery uh, for the full year as okay. as as against that we have already achieved the target of uh, the actual number is four thousand three hundred thirty four crore in fact okay. the year end target we have already achieved. Another around 700 to 800 crore I am expecting. So we will be able to achieve total full 5000 crore of recovery during the current uh, financial year. And uh, apart from that, there will be some uh, upgradations also. If these two big accounts are upgrading, that will add uh, to uh, by substantial amount. But if not, otherwise uh, some 300, 400 crore every quarter there are some upgradations are there. Right. Right. Uh, just a just a query. So, in your presentation, where you uh, present the business performance and advances, 
so there are there is a, there are two values uh, first is what is the services uh, business like loans to services sector so if you go to slide page number 19, 19 on the bottom right hand chart there is a pie chart which mm -hmm. shows the advances so 58 yeah. 574 is the industry advances then 24889 is True. service so what is this services more of trading so it will be SME, MSME, okay. traders, right? Yeah, we will get back to you. Both so. in the uh, SME as well as also agriculture service yeah. units. That because so there will be services rendered both in agriculture, MSME also, okay, and then there will be some amount of uh, services in corporate side also. We, so, right. The, right. so let me get back to you exactly okay. because these are for that. Uh, RBA definition. Yeah. Right. Then there is one more doubt. In the same slide, uh, in the, that pie chart, you mentioned that personal loans is 52,086 crores. Personal loans. Okay. Uh, personal loans. But in the uh, in the uh, bar diagram above, in structured retail assets, you say that September 21, total retail assets is 60093. So yeah. what is the difference? Yes. Yeah. First of all, our personal loan portfolio is not that. Definitely. Right. Portfolio is only 500 crores. 500 crores is a personal loan portfolio. I think if you look at that, uh, the light blue color in the bar chart, yeah. the first uh, top tier, six, uh, 540 is the personal loan. Correct. Correct. Compared to 514 and uh, 582 in December 20. That's Correct. the movement in the personal loan. Correct. Uh, aggregate is uh, the gray figure is the right hand side. 59, 1, 2, 3, 60, 61. Okay. Then, uh, uh, what is your question exactly in this? So, so, so even that 60,093 uh, doesn't match with the personal 52,086 in the chart. Yeah, yeah. This uh, personal loans is uh, the, something else. I think in the uh, advances. So, can you can you uh, just uh, modify this slide because it confuses because the balance sheet advances are just I think one lakh thirty around. Yeah, this is personal. If you look at it, that is five thirty six point fifty one. Okay. Correct. So what has happened, I think, because of that uh, decimal thing, I think the pie chart has got distorted. So thanks for pointing it out. We'll correct that. But the figure is right. That 536.51 is the figure. Only that uh, uh, the graph is wrong because the decimal got missed out and therefore the overall sharing has uh, got affected. It, it's definitely the pie, the share of the pie is not that. It okay. is much as uh, very small. Thanks okay. for pointing it out. Right. Sir, also uh, in the employee expenses of 859 crore, uh, can you just uh, explain what is the impact of that family pension adjustment? That is one. And yeah. what could be done? So this, obviously this quarter contains the prior period adjustments. And that is why what could be the normal quarter run rate uh, going forward for employee expenses? Yeah, employees, uh, we have provided uh, for three quarters, we have provided 50, 50 crores is what we have provided for three quarters. So hmm. on an average per, per quarter, you can take it as 17 crores. Right. So in last quarter, say 6, 698 uh, crore plus 17 crore could be the employee expense going forward. Is that right? or? Huh. I mean, 17 crores is what would be the, uh, the, 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 in the last quarter. Yeah. I mean, uh, per quarter. So right. the, the, the we have provided for three quarters this time. Therefore, two quarters will not be repeated. Right. Right. But uh, even if we just uh, exclude, say, 51 uh, crore from 859, ah. still it is 808 crore versus 7, 698 crores last quarter. So is there anything else in this? Yeah. Then there is the NPS also, the, uh, the National Pension Scheme. There right. also we have announced the contribution. So that right. impact from the effective date to now has also been taken into account. Right. And what is that impact? How much? That Roughly? is about 120. 50 crores. 4 crores per month. That is 4 crores per month. So it is one year impact, 50 crores is what we are taking. Right, right. So, so can you just uh, tell what will be the quarterly expense going forward when this abnormal adjustments are not there? Roughly. So 4 crores per NPA. That right. is uh, the, uh, plus after the uh, four is the announcement, then the, the, the normal run rate, 
plus similarly for the family and pension, uh, that together will be uh, how much is this? Okay. Thank you. Hmm. About 720, but the uh, normal run rate would be about 720 overall. And yes. But uh, the, you will have to keep in mind that the age 15 plays a role here. This right. time there has been a valuation hit of about 120 crores. Due to right. 67 crores, sorry. 67 so, crores. like, you know, as Sitaram ji has clarified, there right. this salary structure consists of two parts, as you are, you know, you can see. One is that, you know, salary and other benefits, and second is that AS-15 provision. Now, this AS-15 provision depends on that 30-year year interest rate. Now, that keeps on varying. So, uh, if the rates are increasing, then, you know, we may, may not be uh, required to make any provision on that. If the rates are declining, there will be provision. So, that will keep on varying. But the salary part structure is that, that because this time we have provided for one year, I think more than one year for NPS areas and then this three quarters uh, family pension. So uh, apart from that, that normal expenditure will be there, which will be in the range of around say same 720, say sir, roughly 700, 721 like that. So the, the, that the AS15 provision, uh, we cannot predict at this juncture. Yeah. Good. Only we cannot take back a provision. So if there is a favorable movement, there will be no provision made. Right. So just last question from my side. Uh, previous quarter, you had provided details of uh, 983 crores of other income. Similarly, can you provide this for this quarter, December, and last year, same quarter, December? And if possible, can you include, include this data from next time onwards in PPT itself so that we don't have to waste time? Yeah. I mean, the, uh, you want the breakup of the other yeah. income, is it? Yes. So it will be core fee, treasury, revaluation, forex, recovery. These were the items just last time. Okay. And I thought we had given that. One second. We had given that. Okay. So the, as far as the commission part is concerned, mm. okay, the, for the quarter, it is 450 crores. Right. And nine months, it is 1290 crore. Correct. Okay. Then on sale of investments, it's uh, 151 hmm. and uh, 1046. Right. Okay. Then uh, revaluation of investments is small, that is uh, 3 and 63. Right. Forex? Uh, uh, then on Forex, it is 171 and 505. Right. And the uh, other major recovery from write-off is 308 and uh, the triple seven. Right. And uh, miscellaneous income is 65 and 142. Perfect, sir. Perfect. And same same numbers for last year, same quarter? December yeah. 20. Same way. I will give three months and nine months. Okay. Yeah. Commission and the brokerage, 460 and 1228. Right. And profit on sale of investment, 641 and 1631. Right, one six three one. One six three one. Yeah. Perfect. Then the uh, profit and revaluation of investment seventy two and seven. Right. Then the, the, the forex is eighty four and one four seven. Right. Recovery from written of cases one zero five and two seventy nine. Right. This line is income seventy and one forty five. Right. Okay. And if we have taken the suggestion, we'll include this in the presentation. Yes. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back if I have other questions. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. The next question is in the line of Renish. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, just a uh, couple of uh, clarification on this uh, uh, corporate accounts. Uh, so, what is what could be the uh, systemic exposure? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, so, yeah, sir. So, uh, the corporate account which uh, slipped in the uh, Q3. Yeah. Uh, what could be the systemic exposure of these two accounts? Ah, sir.
See, it's uh, one issue that on the divergence part, RBI does it selectively for each bank as part of that inspection. Yeah, the time gap. Yeah, There's so a time gap between their reports. So mm -hmm. once we have downgraded in Q3 because of a divergence, mm -hmm. the banks in the consortium, according to our knowledge, nobody else has done so far. Yeah, so I'm just trying to understand uh, what could have triggered, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say a regulator asking us to downgrade uh, while rest of the industry is still not downgrading. I mean, it, it is just a, a quarter away from where a system will also downgrade or it's a technical thing and hence you are saying the same account will upgrade in the next quarter. We are not sure uh, what will be the regulator's stance because everybody uh, gives representations also, including us, we gave a representation. And okay. others also as part of their inspection reports, they give a representation, so RBA may have a reason, we don't know. But mm -hmm. as of now, in Q3, I think we are the only banks who had downgraded that account based on RBI. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it is tried to assume it's a 90 DPD plus account? No. So this, was, uh, this was an old restructuring. And okay. according to the banks, all the banks, some 9 or 10 of them, all the conditions for restructuring were uh, met with, and the mm -hmm. account was upgraded by us in March. Oh, but okay. They had a difference of opinion, and they said you shouldn't have upgraded and hence downgrade again. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got it. But others are maintaining that upgraded status. So, got it. there are no dues in this account. Got it, got it, got it, sir. And this is Actually, uh, there are there are no overdues. Rather, one year in advance they have paid. So, uh, DPD wise, that that wise there is no problem, no overdue. Got it, got it. So, this is uh, a pure technical reason. Um, uh, that is why we are quite confident that it will be it is will be upgraded either this quarter or next quarter. Got it, got it, sir. Uh, pretty much clear, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank thanks you. a lot for the clarification. Uh, just uh, uh, you know, uh, last part. Uh, uh, you know, on this uh, new investment uh, valuation paper, uh, which, uh, you know, RBI has put out, uh, do you guys foresee any uh, negative impact on PNL uh, once it gets implemented? On the other hand, I feel that there will be a positive impact. Okay. But as of now, the method is that it don't recognize any upside and provide Correct. all downside. Whereas, Correct. Uh, this is moving more towards uh, IFRS, the index uh, version. So though it's yeah. not completely in alignment to Tinder, but still it is moving towards that. Which means that there could be a recognition of some of the upsides, which so far banks were not allowed to. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. that's it from my side, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time, let me please press star and one. We have a follow-up question from the line of Pranav Tenderkar from Red Enterprise. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Sir, uh, could you just uh, give some detailed view on how loan growth is looking forward in both retail and corporate accounts? Thanks a lot. Yeah, Mr. Joseph, can you take it uh, for uh, wholesale and uh, retail? I will request Mr. Suresh Khatanar. Kindly, Suresh, you mention about that co-lending uh, steps we have taken, agreements and all these things. So kindly uh, explain, uh, Mr. Joseph. Yes. So overall, as uh, MD mentioned this time and also in the last times, our target for this year, asset growth target has been 8 to 10 percent. And within that, we are confident that by Q4 we will achieve, though as of now, Q3, it is uh, at 5%. Now, on the corporate side, for Q3, year on year, we have grown by about 12%. On the mid-corporate uh, side, on the large corporate, it is, uh, there is a slight negative growth. But if we were to take the NCDs, because during the last two quarters, there has been a heightened activity in the non-convertible dementia market. And some of this, as you are aware, were also eligible under the TLTRO scheme of RBI which ended on December 31st, to be put under the HTM bracket also. So we have also picked up some quality paper uh, in the uh, primary market uh, for uh, that. That is, of course, showing in our investment book and not in the credit book. So overall, MCG, we have grown by about 12%. The large corporate is stagnant. But 
at the end of Q4, I think we will be able to grow the corporate book also by about 10%. As far as retail is concerned, uh, see large portion of, I mean, when we say retail, it is a RAN. So large portion consists of our home loan, where the growth has been already 7% by and by basis. And the uh, disbursements uh, over last two months have uh, started picked up, I mean, because of the, you know, activities also has picked up in these things. So these are growing uh, rapidly. On the uh, SME front and the agriculture front, also there is a pickup. Uh, on the SME front, uh, now we have entered with uh, three partners in the co-lending. So that push is additionally coming. And um, uh, good quality of the microfinance uh, lending is also happening uh, on the agriculture front. There's a uh, good momentum on the gold loan book also. So that is also a part of the agriculture loan. So that is also growing. So I think uh, we should be able to maintain the momentum there on the retail. Right, sir. And, and going forward, how is it looking for, say, next 12 months? 12 months, I think we will continue the uh, strategy uh, which we have adopted and um, our focus on uh, granular uh, business and the quality business will grow. So uh, it's, we are looking at a minimum of 10% growth. Right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Vishal Gupta from Bernetta International. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, could you please elaborate on this co-lending arrangement that you've spoken of? So co-lending arrangement, we have entered with uh, three partners and uh, one is already activated. Um, uh, what more details you would like to know, sir? Uh, what is the size of the uh, lending that you've done so far on the through the co-lending partners? And how do you expect it to track over the next, uh, let's say, year or so? So these are recent uh, additions. Uh, uh, we have already signed up for about um, 100 crore to begin with, with the partners. But this we will grow. There are some two, three other partners which we are talking to. And um, we expect this book to be about 500 crore in the next year. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Thank you, and over to you. So thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to all of you for the active participation. Uh, I hope we have been able to answer to your questions. Uh, but if you still have some questions, so kindly feel free to send an uh, email to either me or to Mr. Sitaram, uh, CFO, and we will be very happy to clarify on any issues. Thank you very much, and happy weekend. Thank you very much. You. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now